Welcome everyone to another session on Java Fundamentals. I'm Manibhushan D'Souza, Assistant Professor in Computer Science Department at Dr. P. Dayananda Pai, P. Satisha Pai, GFGC, Mangalore. Today, we are going to see a concept on operators. Before we proceed to that, let us try to upgrade our knowledge on the previous topics that we have covered. In the previous classes, we have talked about identifiers. Identifiers are the names given to the variables. Java imposes some restriction on the identifiers. So when we declare a variable, we can give any name to the variable. However, not all the names are valid in Java. In order for a identifier to be valid, it must always start with a letter or it can start with the dollar symbol as well as it can start with the connecting character and this connecting character has to be underscore. So what it really means is if you create a variable of type integer, you can start the variable as int a is a valid declaration. In the same way, dollar a, the underscore a, is a valid identifier. Also, dollar a is also a valid identifier. So you can start with either dollar or the underscore or a letter. All of them are valid. However, you cannot create a identifier with a number. You can't say that this is not allowed. So you can't say four of us. So that uh, four if you notice over here, is a number and you can't start with a number. In the same way, the first character, after that uh, first character that you have typed, you can have any combination of numbers, currency character or connecting underscore character. So what does this mean is you can start with int a b c this is valid int 1 2 3 4 it is valid however this kind of symbols are not valid so special symbols are not allowed not all the special symbol except the dollar and underscore however this is valid this is also valid this is also valid the reason is after the first character, you can have any other combination. So the next question usually comes is, can I start with underscore A? The answer is, yes, you can start. Can I start with dollar A or some other? It is valid. However, kindly note that trying to use the underscore or dollar as the first character means by convention these variables are used for special purpose so in an ordinary program that you are writing or a commercial program that you may be writing do not start with the underscore or a dollar generally whenever somebody sees a variable like uh, this and i suppose if this is there it just means to say that this i is being used for some strange purpose and not everybody will be using it so it may be required internally for some calculation and uh, whenever we look at that we are not very sure whether there is a one underscore or whether there are two underscores and so on and so forth so we get confused 
and not only we everybody will get confused except the person who created it and that person who created it had some special purpose for creating this so unless and uh, otherwise you have you are doing some system or maybe internal library you are developing a library for java and uh, this kind of uh, work that you are doing please do not venture into uh, creating the variable with the special symbol right at the beginning now that does not mean that java is preventing you from doing it but it's not a good practice to develop a program with uh, special character right in the beginning that to the valid special character you can't have uh, any special character only the valid special character uh, but it is uh, please avoid doing that thing now let's come to the next one that is uh, in c you have a restriction on how many characters will be there for a legal identifier so you can say uh, there must be only eight characters in the as a variable name however uh, there is no such limit in java you can create a variable very descriptive variable which is a uh, easy for anybody to understand you can always create that java does not restrict you from doing that thing. however there are one other restriction that java is imposing on you and that restriction is there are some keywords in java and you cannot use that for example i cannot use if i cannot use else i cannot use uh, int i cannot use load as identifier because they are keywords by the way if you really don't know what is the meaning of saying keywords a keyword is a word whose name is already defined in the programming language so if you write like this int f if you write like this you may say that this is a valid identifier because it is starting with the a character and there is one character and you have already told us sir, that uh, don't start with the uh, underscore and dollar i have not done it but i have just declared a variable as if so is it a valid as far as the rules are considered over here first two rules uh, you can say that it is valid however whenever java encounters uh, uh, if in the program the meaning for if is already declared in java java has a special meaning for if java has a special meaning for float and int and while and other uh, words are there so all these are called as keywords because their meaning is uh, already declared in the programming language and you cannot change them because if you try to change that then the whole programming language has to be changed so do not use keywords we will come to know how many keywords are there in the in java as we start developing programs the last one which is uh, same as that of uh, your c programming language java is case sensitive so if you write a reg number that is register number and capital register number both are considered as a different identifiers they are not same however there are some programming languages uh, the olden programming languages uh, in which they do uh, they were not distinguishing between capital and uh, small cases if you are from that old school then in java you must uh, be careful because the capital and uh, small cases make a difference in java now let's look at uh, some of the example for uh, legal identifier so this is a legal because it starts with the underscore and a letter this is also legal because it starts with the dollar symbol this is legal because what is said is you must start with an underscore then you can have any number of underscores which is completely valid this is also valid because the rule says you have to start with either underscore or dollar followed by any of them that is valid and this one is definitely a valid one even though it's a very lengthier one it is valid so you can have very lengthy variable name let's look at some of the invalid ones so you can't use the colon symbol which uh, is not allowed 
you can't use the minus symbol remember this symbol and this symbol there is a subtle difference between them and uh, the next one is this symbol you know very well is not a valid you can't start with the dot and you can't start with a, a letter i mean a, a number so all of them are uh, illegal so when you declare a variable kindly use the convention that uh, the java is using and the convention is whenever we declare a variable we declare the variable in small case so that's a general rule that uh, we follow however whenever you declare a class like student is a class you have studied in c++ something called a student you always start with the capital letter so the class name is usually starting with a capitals more about the convention we will look at it uh, as we develop the programs so let's go to the the real topic of today and that is a operator so what is a operator for this you have to understand some of the basic mathematics in mathematics uh, whenever you, when uh, you were there in uh, maybe kg class or maybe for standard your teacher told you about uh, these things so you can add two numbers 5 plus 6 in the 5 the plus symbol is an operator so this plus is a operator and the numbers which are there 5 and 6 are operands so the operator acts on the operand so what are operator then operators are the symbol that are used to perform some specific operation in this case the some specific operation is adding two numbers when we talk about operands there are different types of operands are there suppose you have a number 5 and if you add a minus symbol that is a negative this is an operator in front of that 5 the 5 suddenly changes from a positive number to a negative number so what has happened is this operator changes the face value of 5 from a positive to the negative one and you notice over here this operator this is called as a negate operator that is a minus symbol acts only on one of the operand so this is called as unary operator so it acts on one operand however if you write 4 into 5 so this star symbol over here which stands for multiplication acts on two operands so such an operator which uh, requires two operands is called as binary operator it requires two there is one more type of operand it is the question mark and a colon so how does this uh, particular operand work suppose you write like this you read like this so how do you go about um, evaluating this expression we start with the, the first part we evaluate an expression that is written before the question mark so we check is 5 greater than 4 the answer is true in this case if the answer is true whatever you write after the question mark that expression will be evaluated so in this case the, there is a constant value 10 so it's going to take the answer as 
10. Suppose if you write the same thing, 5 less than 4 and the same old thing. In this case, what's going to happen? So the same thing, it's going to evaluate the expression. And in this case, the expression happens to be false. In that case, whatever that is written after the colon will be evaluated. In our case, the 15 will be taken up. So if the first expression is false, then the, uh, whatever that is written after colon will be taken as the answer. If the first expression, if the expression is true, then whatever that is written immediately after the question mark, it can be an expression also. In this case, I have just added a constant here, but you can have an expression. So whatever expression that is written immediately after the question mark will be evaluated and the answer is taken up. One thing you must notice over here is that there is one operator, an um, operand. There is a second operand. There is the third operand. So altogether, when you write something with the question mark, you have the first operand, then the question mark, then the second operand, then a colon, and third operand. Altogether, there are three operands are there. So these are called as ternary. So there are three so ternary operators. So let's come back to the concept now of uh, operators. The operator operates on operands. So there can be one, two, or three operands that can be there to act upon. Okay. Whenever you use a operator, you are telling the compiler to do some sort of a calculation. Either it could be mathematical or logical or assignment or anything. But you are telling the compiler to do something. So if you want the computer to do something, you must use the operator. So operators are the only one that tells the machine to perform some action. Now, when we talk about Java, there are four general classes of operators are there. First one is the arithmetic, next one is the bitwise, third one is the relation, relational, and the last one is the logical. Let's look at the arithmetic operators. They are used to perform arithmetic calculations, which you have studied in your primary classes. And they include the addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and because you know C programming language, the modulus operator. Modulus means remainder operator. Then you know C, so it is plus plus you can use, minus minus you can use, increment and decrement. And the compound assignment that is plus equal to, minus equal to, star equal to, division equal to and modulus equal to that is modulus assignment all are uh, being used so i will not uh, venture into the primary class uh, calculation so i'll skip that one because i know that you know how to add subtract divide and multiply let's go to the uh, the one operator which uh, has some special meaning and one such operator is this minus symbol which has a strange thing suppose if you write minus x then this minus in an, in an expression not anywhere uh, the minus symbol will negate the value of x so this particular minus symbol even though you can write x minus y if you write like this here the minus symbol works on two operands that's why it's a binary operator Whereas in this scenario, it, uh, it works only on a single operand. So this acts as a unary operator. Okay.
let's talk about uh, the other operator some caution about the division operator when you are performing a division on an integer value the fractions will not be considered so let's look at that in an action i'll go to my java program and i am going to start a new project so this time i'm going to go a bit faster so i'll go to this project and i'll go to the new project and then I select Java application. I will click next and then I am going to say a project name operators demo and I am going to finish it off. I have nothing else to be done with this dialog box. So let's go here and let's look at uh, some things in action. Suppose if you have uh, int x equal to 10 and y equal to 3 both are integer now if i try to print i type s out now in the last class i told you you can press uh, control and space the other is just option is once you type s out do not press anything else so once you type s out just press tab and you get um, System dot out dot print line. This is much faster. So how did I do that thing? I am going to just oops. I am going to go here and I am going to type yes out. So look at how I am doing yes out. Immediately tap. It's going to come. Now let's go and let's look at uh, this one. If I type x divided by y, and what is x divided by y? By the way. Uh, you know that uh, if you are using 10 divided by 3, so 3 goes 3 times, 1 remaining, so it must be 3.333. You are expecting that as an answer. Let's run it and let's see what is the answer. So if you run this and if you look at uh, the answer over here, you will be surprised to see that uh, Java is doing some uh, wrong calculation. And it just says the answer is 3. Now what is the problem? The problem is when you have both the operate operands as integer, Java performs an integer operation. So it will ignore the fraction. This is very, very uh, critically important. Uh, most of you will make uh, this mistake. Either knowingly or unknowingly, you try to divide a integer a uh, two integer value and you expect that the Java is going to give a binary answer um, you know, the fractional answer but java will not do it now for some who have thought slightly more than what i have explained over here i will try to clarify your confusion i am going to take a, a floating value you can take double also i'll take a float z and i am going to say z is equal to x by y now, why, uh, for those who didn't really get it, what I'm trying to do is, let's look at uh, this whole thing in action. Now, you have 10 here and you are dividing it by 3. Well and good. And you are trying to assign this value to a floating point. So, what do you expect uh, uh, to happen? The answer, you expect the answer to change from a integer to a floating point. Will the Java do that thing? So let's find out. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to print not the value of x divided by y, but uh, the z. Remember, z is a floating point number. So you are dividing 10 by 3 and you expect it to be 10.333. So you expect the answer of this to be 3.33 and so on. So will the Java do that thing for you? So if you run it and you notice that Java no doubt said Z is a floating point number and I do uh, uh, and I do respect that and I'm going to show the result as 3.0. It is not 3 because it is not an integer. It is a floating point. So Java is saying that this is a floating point number. I know it, but I am not going to give you 3.33. What is the reason? Uh, the reason is very obvious this whole thing is integer both of them are integer when you perform integer by integer the answer is always integer 
so suppose if you had written 10.0 what is 10.0 divided by that then you will get an uh, error here so what is the error i will want to show you that error also incompatible and it just says that uh, uh, you are losing some value because you are trying to convert to float from a double can you see that uh, thing over there i can't use the mouse pointer there because it's a tooltip that it is giving what it just says that when i am doing this operation it is not floating point operation it is a double double precision operation and you are putting it in float so double is greater than float you are going to lose some precision so i'm going just to make it as double you know very well double is a double precision number which is a floating point number but with the double precision number so to just to satisfy java i have done that thing so this is a floating point number but with the extra precision that's all and uh, i have already told you whenever java performs uh, any calculation uh, which requires a floating point number it always does it with the double okay so let's go ahead and let's uh, run this one so there is nothing wrong in putting float just java does not like uh, the float most of the time java is happy with the double because uh, it always treats any expression mathematical expression that has a floating point number it treats it as a double even though we treat it as a float java treats it as a double and uh, it just says that double is better uh, don't go with the float so let me run it and let me show you the result and you notice uh, the result now the result is 3.333 and 5 very high precision because it's a double and what has happened over here when one of the operand over here i mean the operand over here is a floating point number the whole thing is taken as a floating point number so be careful if both operators uh, operands are integer then you may end up in trouble when you are actually performing the calculation let's go to the uh, one other thing and that is uh, with respect to the remainder operator we are all familiar with the remainder what is the uh, meaning of saying a remainder so remainder means uh, when you divide a number so if you say 10 mod 3 so 3 goes uh, 3 times so 3 into 3 is uh, 3 goes 3 times so 3 into 3 is uh, 9 and one remaining one is remaining so the model operator is going to give you the answer as one because it's going to give you the remainder when you do the calculation however good thing about uh, java is uh, this operator can be applied even to the floating point number as well as uh, you know it can be uh, applied to the integer so just to give an example i will not type this example so let's assume you have an integer number 42 so if you say x mod 10 the answer is going to be integer because you said it is an integer suppose if you have a floating point number and by the way always remember for java when whenever we say floating point it always treats that as a double so you have a floating point number and you apply the model operator that is uh, y mod uh, 10 you are going to get 2.25 so as simple as that so you know that 40.25 so if you have 40.25 what is the answer if you divide it by 10 10 goes four times what is the remaining 0.25 okay but uh, however what we have here is 42 here so if it is 42 10 goes four times so 4 into 10 is 40 2.25 is remaining and that's what uh, it is trying to show 2.25 is remaining let's go to the next one and that is compound assignment now the compound assignment is nothing but uh, it's a shortcut assignment so suppose if you have an expression like this x a is equal to a plus 4 
So instead of writing the all the operators like this a equal to a plus 4 you can write a shortcut form of it a plus equal to 4. So that is called as compound assignment operator which combines one arithmetical operator with a assignment operator. So the general syntax is suppose if you have this kind of expression where you have a variable and the same variable followed by an uh, operand and then you may have an expression or one more variable. So this can be written in short form as the variable followed by the operand followed by the expression. You can write this one. Let's go ahead uh, with the uh, next thing and that is the what is the benefit of using the compound assignment operator first of all when you are using compound uh, assignment operator you can notice over here it saves a bit of typing you don't have to write uh, the expression again and again so it saves some time apart from that the good thing about it is uh, when you write like this it is uh, more efficiently implemented in java so it slightly goes faster if you are doing the compound assignment so it is always uh, advisable to go with the compound assignment let's look at uh, the other arithmetic operator and that is the increment and decrement operator so increment operator is marked as plus plus and decrement operator is minus minus so instead of writing x is equal to x plus 1 you can write a short form x plus plus which means x is equal to x plus 1 in the same way x is equal to x minus 1 can be written in short as x minus minus so some few information about it let's go to the let me over here let me take uh, the integer x here so i have x value here so let me start from there so if i say x plus plus and i have to print uh, the x value so if i print the x value then what will be the answer you know everybody knows the answer but still i'm going to show you the answer so x is equal to x plus 1 so 10 plus 1 is going to be 11 and that's what uh, it's trying to show you here so it's 11 however few details let me take two variables y equal to plus plus x so i wrote plus plus in the beginning i'm going to remove this one so i will start with the clean slate the initial value of x is 10 and the x has been incremented so let's see what is the value of uh, x and y so i'm going to make it uh, appear a bit more beautiful by saying x is equal to so this will make it uh, appear a bit uh, nice so i'm going to copy this one you know very well control c to copy and control v to paste so you just copy paste it and uh, y is equal to i'll print the value of y i am not incrementing decrementing or anything i am just trying to print x is equal to 10 the value of x and y is equal to the value of uh, 10 this is inside the print line statement so don't get confused there so i am going to just run it and uh, you see the uh, difference there so when i do that thing so it should have taken the value of uh, y should have been 10 there because uh, i have okay value is uh, correct the value is uh, 11 what is the reason so you let's look at this uh, y is equal to plus plus x 
so what is the meaning of saying plus plus x means uh, it is the prefix x is uh, the operator is in the prefix and one other thing you must notice this is a unary operator so it works on one operand so let's look at uh, the uh, meaning over here x plus plus means it is going to perform this calculation first and then assign it to y so you notice that uh, so when uh, x value is assigned x value was 10 here 10 is not assigned but 10 is incremented as 11 and the 11 is assigned there now let's go to the this is prefix uh, notation let's go to the postfix notation so what happens uh, if i go with the postfix notation x plus plus so if i go with the x plus plus and if i run this and uh, you notice uh, a subtle difference uh, so here you notice that y value is 10 but x value is uh, 11 what happened what is the meaning of saying a uh, post uh, fix notation is that when you have let me change the color okay when you have the y is equal to x plus plus what is the meaning of it is first assign the value of x to y first do that thing and then go with the increment operator so what was the original value of uh, x original value of x was 10 so first it is doing this assignment part then it will take up the x and it will increment the value of x by 1 so x gets incremented by 1 so that's going to be 11 and you see that here x is incremented however y is given the previous value of uh, x and that is uh, 10 so this is the difference so the, when you have this uh, postfix and uh, prefix notation a bit uh, be careful with that uh, thing so you can have the increment or decrement operator either in the postfix form or a prefix form pre means it comes before the operand so if you write minus minus z that means to say that this is pre which comes before and if you write z minus minus it is post it comes afterwards okay so here one difference you notice that i have already given x is equal to 42 and here prefix is given so the first it assigns a value of 42 to y and then if it is a postfix so if you write x is equal to 42 and if you go with this one y is equal to x plus plus if you do this that is a uh, that is your postfix notation so it's going to increment and then it's going to assign however if you are going for a prefix then the result is slightly different it assigns 42 first and then goes with the increment so i'm sorry uh, I again confused here i suppose so if it is a prefix if it is a postfix it's uh, let's start with the postfix so x is equal to 42 if it is a postfix notation that means to say that the value of x is incremented after the assignment if it is a prefix value of x is incremented first and then assigned so in this case it is a prefix so value of x is incremented first and then assigned to y so the y is going to be 43 in this case let's go to the next type of operator and that is bitwise operator so bitwise operator can be applied to the integer types that you must always understand it cannot be applied to floating point or any other uh, type it can be applied to the integers only and you know very well integers could be long into short byte as well as characters i've already talked about it so you can apply on uh, 
the bitwise operator on them the word itself says it is bit so that means to say that so it works only on bits so within the integer long or anything you know very well whatever number you type ultimately it's going to be stored as some binary values inside the computer so if you want to operate on individual binary values of a integer or a long or a short or a character then you can use bitwise operator one exception for uh, this is the character which is also treated as a integer however in java except the character all the integer types are signed one so they are all signed integer what is the meaning of it is the last bit that you have so you have a number the most significant uh, bit here represent the sign of uh, the number so if this is one then whatever you write on the other side so whatever number binary number you have it here if this is one it is assumed to be negative so this value 1010 if it is that's the binary 1010 is nothing but 10 it is minus 10 suppose this bit is 0 then it is plus 10 so remember the last bit msb is the sign bit you must always remember that however java is not storing in this ordinary binary form it stores it in two's complement so integers are stored in two's complement form so you must be bit careful whenever you are doing the uh, this kind of uh, operation and that is when you have the two's complement and when there is this uh, sign bit over here it can lead to an unexpected result the re unexpected result occurs when the msp suddenly changes to 0 to 1 or from 1 to 0 so when this msp that is the most significant bit or the top bit changes its uh, number that is from 0 to 1 your number suddenly shifts from positive to negative which you may not expect in your program so you don't want to suppose you may be doing some calculation uh, and you expect that number to be positive just because you did some bitwise manipulation this number may suddenly change to a negative number and it may lead to a complication in your program so let's look at a few example over here so if you look at um, the two's complement of uh, 42 how do you do that thing so you take the number 42 and you convert it into its ordinary binary form okay so this is going to be 36 and so this is uh, 2 to the power 2 it is uh, 0 2 4 8 16 32 okay so this is 32 this part 32 plus 8 that is 40 plus 2 so that is nothing but 42 that's simple as that this is the ordinary binary equivalent of 42 however how do you go for two's complement so you take that bit and invert it so when you invert what happens so if you take uh, the number ordinary binary number what was uh, it so i am taking this number you take this number what was uh, it so it was zero zero one zero one zero correct and one zero <coughs> is it uh, same so zero zero 
one zero one zero one zero. So let me make that one zero one zero one zero. It is okay. And now invert it. So invert means wherever zero is there, convert it into one. Zero is there, convert it into one. One is there, invert it to zero. Zero is there, invert it into one. One is there, invert it into zero. Zero is there, invert it into one. One is there, invert it into zero, and zero is there, invert it into one. So this is the inversion of uh, the ordinary binary into this form. That is not two's complement. Add one to it. So what you are going to get? You are going to get one. So this is one one zero one one zero one zero one one so that's going to be the value that you're going to get that's a two's complement and how do you get it get the from one's complement how do you get uh, it back to the binary form again same thing you take this number invert it add one to it the so same idea take this two's complement invert it back add one to it you're going to get the equivalent of that so java always stores it in the two's complement form internally it stores it into in the two's complement form so do you have to bother about it the answer is no you there is no need for you to uh, scratch your head on no two's complement however you must remember at this part this is very important so when you whenever you store an integer number you, the thing that you must know is the most significant bit is the sign bit you must remember that that is one thing you have to remember because if this the last bit shifts either it becomes zero or one your number is going to change otherwise nothing is going to happen so let's look at um, the bitwise operators so there are a lot of bitwise operators are there so you can have a unary so this is unary means it's going to work on a single operand unary not and then you oh sorry the bitwise and bitwise or then bitwise exclusive or right shift left shift and shift with zero and you have uh, the compound operator the and followed by assignment or followed by assignment xor followed by assignment and uh, uh, the right shift with the assignment right shift with the zero fill with the assignment and the left shift with the assignment so let's look at um, them in action before we look into them let's try to recall what uh, we have studied in our digital computer fundamentals so the, if the value of uh, a and b are 0 0 if you do the and operator this is and so if you perform this and operator and 0 and 0 is 0 so what is the condition for and if any of the operand is 0 the and will always gives a 0 not a, this is not and sorry this is and so we start with the and first so if any of the operand uh, operator uh, the operand is zero and will always uh, give the answer as zero so if any of the operator i'm sorry operand is uh, zero then and is going to give you zero so in this case one of them is zero if both of them well and good if one of them is zero and is always zero if one of them is zero and is zero if one of them is 0 and is 0 otherwise if both of them are 1 then and is going to give you 1 let's go to the next one that is the or operate the or is if one of them is 1 so or is different from and if one of them is 1 if both of them are 1 well and good if one of them at least one of them is 1 and the or is going to give you so why you may be thinking why this person is making a lot of mistake this is 7 30 i have to go to college now that's the reason so i'm be doing it a bit faster so if this is 
one if one of the operator is one here then i mean operand is one then the result is always one if uh, both of them are zero then you get uh, zero in the or what about uh, exclusive what is exclusive exclusive means uh, if one is there the other should not be there that is the meaning so if, if one is there the other should not be there if first one is not there the other must be there so uh, it is like i want uh, people who can play cricket or football so if you say or football so there may be a person who knows how to play cricket as well as football so he will be there in uh, both the teams but uh, i want to give a chance to everybody in the class not one person otherwise there will be only one all rounder who is there in the cricket uh, kabaddi kokko every team that person is there in the stage he is there or he or she is there everywhere he or she is there so that uh, when if you if i try to do that i will uh, not give an opportunity to all the students so what i am going to say is i want somebody who knows cricket or football but uh, the my condition is if your name is there in the cricket team don't come to football team so if you know cricket and football well and good but if you uh, have already registered with the cricket team don't come to football or don't come to kabaddi team it is uh, in marriages if you nowadays because of corona there is no function otherwise when it, during the marriage function they will say that there is a non veg counter and there is a veg counter they always say that okay i, I am non veg that is why i prefer the non veg counter but i don't bother about what is been served in the veg counter and maybe if you are a veg person uh, you will go to the veg and you will eat there but you will never bother to see what non veg is being served there so either you are there in the veg counter or you are there in the non veg counter you don't go generally as a decency you don't go uh, between the two different counters so either you are here or you are there how do i say that thing to say that i am going to use uh, the exclusive or so in the exclusive or either you are there in one counter and you are not there in the other counter or you are there in the other counter not in the first counter so then the exclusive or works if you are there in both the counter then that means you have come to the marriage function without invitation so then you can write and anyhow, if you are not shown up uh, that's a bad thing that you have not shown up so uh, so this is how the exclusive or works what about um, the negation that is uh, inversion so inversion is uh, if you take uh, zero it becomes one if you take one it becomes zero so just invert it so simple as that so let's look at um, this uh, in action uh, i am going to go here and uh, i am going to uh, take uh, a byte you know very well a byte is a byte x is equal to okay 5 byte y is equal to three okay i'm going to use yes out and i am going to apply x or y okay let's run it and uh, let's run it and just see whether you get some answer now you get some answer very nice you are happy that you got the answer but how did you get that answer so if you can see it i am going to show that thing i am running out of time for this demo now because it is already 7:30 uh, let me try okay so it's okay uh, i'm going to go with the byte here and i will go here if you notice if you are using netbeans uh, and i am sorry that uh, some of you don't have uh, computers at home i can't help you with uh, a computer i can't provide you a computer but at least you have uh, the mobile with you hope you have uh, the good 
a mobile when i say good mobile a mobile with uh, slightly better memory there are a lot of uh, ides are available in uh, mobile that is java id please install them i will not show you a demo on uh, how to do it uh, on my mobile the reason uh, for some i have already told you i have banking application uh, which are installed on my mobile like i have a uh, account in syndicate bank access bank and they i have their app on my mobile i'm taking your uh, time sorry about that this is just a verification uh, i don't know whether there is a bug in that uh, banking access bank or syndicate bank or uh, state bank app i try to install a, a software like id or something and if i give a permission to that it may start uh, manipulating the vulnerabilities which are there in those banking app and i may start losing money from my account sorry about that i can't do it uh, even if you want me to do it i won't show you a demo and how to do it on my mobile because i try to do this kind of uh, uh, stunt with my mobile i may end up in losing all my money uh, in my bank app not that android is not uh, secure i don't trust uh, the banking app which is there now you may say then why don't why did you install that thing i have to do it today it is a digital world everywhere uh, i can't expect uh, uh, to give cash uh, sometime the transaction has to be done on online in most of the time so i need them sorry about that so i don't have uh, unwanted app in my mobile uh, but you can try them okay so i think i think i took one minute above of you and uh, at least some of you got why i am not showing a demo on uh, the my android phone let's go ahead and what did i do okay, uh, when i was talking i went to this uh, corner and i clicked on uh, this number over here this is a line number that it is showing you so just click on here you get a red color spot there so this is to say that i have set a breaking point a break point has been written so you see that line break point and what is the meaning of it is i am just telling the uh, that means that you start executing run the program when you come up to this point just stop the program remember this works only when i am debugging it hope uh, everybody knows the meaning of debugging it a program so i go here that's very 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 important now you see a menu at this point run in this i can run the project if you try to run the shortcut for it is f6 uh, if you run this project nothing is going to happen i want to debug this program so i go to this debug and then i say debug program the keyboard shortcut for it is control f5 i try to do this so i clicked on it and you see that some of the options over here got highlighted so what it the program did was i took a breakpoint here i had put a breakpoint here it came up to this point and it said i executed up to this point you said don't execute from here i have stopped here now you can check what is going on so now i am asking java go one step at a time so that i want to know what is happening at every one step so i want the java to execute this one line and show me what it is trying to do now this trick is done by not uh, java it is done by netbeans the good id there is also a very good id another id called uh, eclipse the now why didn't i took that eclipse is uh, in your lab what i found was netbeans was installed so i am sticking on with the netbeans this is also a good idea it is not a bad one so let's go ahead and let's um, uh, go with the step wise execution now i am going to concentrate uh, my whole uh, focus on this lines over here this particular part so let me zoom it a bit so there are few things that uh, it is there the first one is step into so that means i want to step into this line step out of this means if there is a function like square root or any other function is that suppose you are calling a function called square root and you have entered into there are a lot of lines of codes are there you have entered into this uh, square root it will show you all the steps of the square root i am not really interested in sometimes we just say i am not interested in you have this uh, print line statement over here 
that println is actually a function whatever you write it's a function now i don't want to know what how the print line is uh, printing because that is not uh, something that uh, i am really interested in so when uh, when i come to this print line i can just say step out of print line go don't show me the individual steps within that function for that i use uh, the step out okay and there are other i will come back to it and definitely you know you have used uh, the at least uh, the cd player this is to stop this is to pause this is to play so it is a uh, obvious one let's go ahead and let me go with the step into i am going with the step into this one i want to see what is going on step into so i press step into nothing happened and uh, my line is there you see here however the good thing about it is when you click on it i wanted to show you the i think i close that variables so where are my variables okay you notice uh, first thing uh, it's going to now show you if you keep the cursor over here it's going to now show you that uh, x value is 5 and it is a byte however i can also show you the variable i think uh, I closed it. Uh, let me go to the window and uh, debugging. Okay. Uh, by the way, uh, that is also something really. Uh, Sometimes things happens for good. Even though I am running out of time again, 7:44. Uh, suppose if uh, something is missing, you don't see in NetBeans. You don't see something. Oh, this person is showing uh, this project window in my machine. It is not coming. Oh, this is not coming in my machine. What am I going to do? it is not coming because uh, you have accidentally uh, closed this so i also do it so not just uh, i'm not blaming you uh, if you click on this x mark it actually closes suppose if it is not visible what am i supposed to do go to this window so in this window you have all the options so these are called as window they are not visible to you you can just make it now something is not visible to me and that is uh, in my debugging i cannot see the variables so that's what uh, is missing that is what i've been telling you some of you got confused oh, what is he trying to search i'm searching for variables which are not there so i go to a window and then variables. suppose if this project is not visible to you go to window and go to project and suppose you messed up you closed many things you really did something terribly wrong just go here and just say reset the window it will reset it to company default so it will come back to the uh, first uh, uh, position now let me go to the debug so this is good thing that has happened i'll go to the debugging and variables so if i do that what's going to happen you see that this is what i wanted okay i wanted to see the variables so you notice here uh, suppose in your case if it is not visible you know very well I'll go to window and variables now what is very good interesting about it is uh, you see the one line x is equal to 5 has been executed and you can uh, see that uh, it is going to show the, there is a variable called x it's of type byte don't worry about args uh, we have not done anything about uh, strings uh, rgs so it is coming from here okay L let's look at uh, this one the value that is assigned to the x is 5 now i if you want if you are, you are not happy in looking at uh, that 5 in that case you can just go here right click on it i'm going to do it slightly here right click on it and then say that display as it is showing as a decimal binary so you know very well pi is 101 in binary okay i am in the first line is over i want to go to the next line now this green line indicates this line is going to be executed not it executed but it's going to be executed how do i do it 
I go and go to this and I'm going to say I'm going to go here and I'm going to say step into my next line so when I do it you just observe here what I'm what is going to happen I've not done it so if I click it that line gets executed and you notice so immediately now the variables uh, uh, let me says that I got one more variable what's the one more variable I got it I got the one more variable as a y which is byte and whose value is 3. Now I don't want to look at it as the decimal. I want it to be shown as binary. So what is it? It is 1 1. You know very well. And what is the operation I am performing? I am performing the operation x or y. So let's go ahead and let me do this one. So you have 5 which is 101 and you have 3 which is 011. If you or this what is going to happen. So you know very well in or if even if one of them is true you are going to get the answer. I am going to quickly write the answer 111. So what is 111? 2 to the power 0 is 1. 2 to the power 2. Uh, 2 to the power 1 is uh, 2. 2 to the power 2 is 4. So 4 plus uh, 2 plus uh, 1. This is going to be 7. Now I am running out of time. So I will stop this one after the particular demo. I am going to just say uh, go for the end. Just execute it. So I am going to just uh, end up. And uh, when I uh, end up, uh, oh, I think I made a mess here. So I am going to run it. And my answer happens to be 7. Sorry about that. I have to stop uh, because uh, I am getting late. So we will uh, meet again maybe today itself at some other time. Thank you for your interest.